Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. We are in Sam's shop and we're checking out the cheetah. And we've got a couple here, some different colors. I really like the gloss blue and black. We've got the black accents, but over here you can see the leather accents and it's really cool. They actually go all the way down to this like gas tank looking thing. Obviously very motorcycle inspired. We have direct mount, extra long fork steel with some extra mounting points and stuff. There's just, there's a lot to say about this bike. We're gonna get them outside. Uh, but I wanted to start off here because we got a couple of the batteries laying around and these are not super easy to get out. They're actually like bolted into this box um, and they've got a little Allen key. You probably need like a four or five millimeter to get that out. So it's not something you're gonna be taking out a lot, but the good news is if you park this thing at a bike rack or whatever, no one's gonna be able to, they might not even know it has a battery in it. So I think that's kind of cool. I really like that they have two battery options. So it's 48 volt in both cases, but we have 13 amp hour or 17.5 amp hour, the difference being about $300 and a pound. <laughs> so it's like seven and a half pounds for the 13 amp hour, uh, eight and a half for the 17.5, but that could be really good if you're a larger rider like my buddy over here, or maybe you're using the throttle a lot, you're going up some big hills, you're doing some trails, because this is a fat tire bike. I mean, it's this is wild. I'm, I'm really excited about this thing. Before I get too excited though, uh, here's the charger one and a half pounds, two amp. So it's kind of generic. A lot of times that's what you get with bikes like this. Um, the price is pretty good on this actually. It's like $22.99 or $25.99 depending on the battery, right Sam? Correct. Okay, yes. so for me, I mean to have something like totally custom frame, only one size, but actually three colors. They do have like a black one with a red tank. Just, you know, kind of kind of neat and inspiring almost. And this goes back to your I don't, your style and some of your roots. So what's the deal on this bike for me is, is the aesthetics of it. It doesn't look like so much of an electric bike because they've hidden the battery so well inside the gas tank. And I've seen that on other models in the past mm -hmm. and they don't pull it off as well as they do on this bike. Hmm. I agree. Yeah. And you've got, there's some more stories and stuff to tell. I wanna do that outside, um, but this is Sam's shop. Uh, Sam's been letting me stay with him. I wanted to say thanks to him and also wanted to do this with him because he was working with the company a little bit, giving them some feedback. Hey, hey buddy. You know, you can see it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. Look at his, look at his headlight on that thing. It's, it's very, it's very similar. It's really neat to get the, kind of the style and get the perspective from someone who's come from this background. You know, we planned this out. We thought this would be kind of fun to, to share with you guys and to sort of show you back to back, maybe some of the design inspiration, some of the excitement. And I love that this thing has hydraulic disc brakes, that it's got a color LCD display with this nice remote button pad, high and low beams on that light. I keep coming back to that because for me, that's like a centerpiece. Um, and I want to call out though, that, that it's also a comfort bike. You know, these bigger tires, they give you good, it's just kind of, vibration dampening and even even bumps and stuff you're going to span the cracks a little bit better i'm frequently calling these out as like sand and snow ready because you can lower the tire pressure and you can handle that but this is it's like a 75 pound bike 76 almost so on the website they're like 74 so eh, it's a little heavier than they said um, and again, it depends on the battery. There's like a pound of weight difference there. They could have shaved off some weight if these were punched out rims, uh, but perhaps they're a little bit sturdier this way. 13 gauge spokes in the front, 12 extra thick in the rear, 36 spokes, okay, versus 32. And they've got a fat bike specific 750 watt motor. So you heard Sam a second ago with all the, uh, tell me about your bike over there, man. Oh, uh, it's what I rode the inner bike actually this year. I did 1,100 miles from SoCal up to NorCal and then over to Reno. It's right it's, after uh, you had your appendix removed? No, I had kidney stones removed uh, a couple weeks before that, but Ouch. I put my kidney belt on and I made it no problem. Good job. I'm glad yeah. you made it safe, man. Yeah, that's you said a, people were giving you the like Harley wave yeah, all I've the way. Yeah, I've forgotten. I've been working seven days a week for the last couple years, so oh, I kind of forgot about the brotherhood <laughs> and you're supposed to give the wave to all the... Uh, everybody on the motorcycles as you go by. So I had it pretty much down by the end of the trip. What's this rated at though? Like in terms of, I don't even know when it comes to motors. Is it a V8, Sam? What do we no, got we under the hood? just got a classic V-Twin. V okay, uh, It's cool. a, a Road King from 2000. It was fairly, actually, these bikes are fairly affordable. I picked this up for $6,000. Wow. You know, and- wait, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you say to people 
when I'm, I'm just, I'm reviewing some Reese and Mueller bikes, I'm reviewing some, that's right. you know, specialized, so, they got $6,000 e-bikes and right. people so, complain about that. So absolutely, so it's, you know, it depends on what you're into, you know, and that fits a certain purpose for me, and uh, if I'm gonna ride to Reno, I actually met a guy, I think I saw it on one of your reviews, a guy rode a GSD from Irvine to Reno, it's like right. four days. That's a turn electric bike called the GSD, and it's like a kind of a cargo bike, um, I don't know, see through the window. But. I think he said he had 10 batteries with him, or how many oh, did he, he carry with him? Oh, he had to change them? them like every 20 miles because it was like uphill in the wind. That's all uphill going up 395, and I went all downhill 395. <laughs> I was getting 50 miles to the gallon when I was keeping the speed below 65 miles an hour on the Harley. At Very about nice. 60, it got really good mileage. Yeah. So I cut you off, but my, my points are always like, hey, no license, no insurance, cheaper fuel. You park this thing inside, it's not going to smell. Uh, what else do you say? Why six thousand dollar e-bike? But th this is also like some of those expensive bikes. That's like a Ferrari, you know, in the bike world. And you were just saying that's an affordable motorcycle. So these are more affordable electric bikes, like you yeah, know, twenty three hundred bucks. Yeah, the Cheetah. I told him you should call it the Bobber actually, because it had that <laughs> kind of cool look to it. You know, kind of like an old. Uh, you know, bobber look, Neat. motorcycle term I'm using. I yeah. have no idea what we're talking about, but I'm gonna overlay a bobber like when I make this video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you know, it comes down to uh, what you can afford first of all, uh -huh. and if you have the means to get a $6,000 bike and you're gonna be using it to commute, it's like a tool for you. Other people wanna get a, maybe a $5,000 mountain bike, yeah. and that is for enjoyment. You're gonna go out and you're gonna get a good workout and you're gonna be climbing hills, and. It's kind of addictive. You get one buddy to get ones. I got a guy that volunteers for her named Steve, and he went on a review with you once on yeah. a high bike. And all his buddies have bought bikes through our store, and they're all his friends, and they all go riding together. He's retired. They ride four days a week, and it's all with customers that have bought bikes from us. And they've oh. got their own little fraternity down there in South Orange County. That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Whatever, I read your comments, I hear you. Um, I'm trying to mix in a little bit of everything, you know, and again, with the team, I appreciate them. So I was just going through some of the things that stood out to me, but we do want to get out there and get in a nicer spot where it's a little quieter and um, and just go through this together. So let's do it, you ready to go? Yeah, let's do it. Sweet. So, big man's bike for sure. Yeah, so, how tall are you, Sam? What's I'm 6'4", your... and uh, everybody I've sold these to so far have been uh, large males, you know? Mm -hmm. I had a guy, uh, Andre, who was six foot nine and he was a little over 350 pounds. Wait a and minute, we, his name was Andre? <laughs> yeah, I called him Andre the Giant. Cute. We put a three inch riser and a goose neck that was adjustable and put the bars out and higher for him. Huh. And we put a big thud buster out back and lifted him up a little <laughs> bit higher. He was stoked, he was so happy with the bike. Put the larger battery in there as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Oh boy, you guys might have heard me going off that curb. I'm hearing the chain slap, that steel chain cover. And yeah, I'm, I'm you know, 5'9". I'm getting like decent reach here. Oh boy, I'm gonna take it down. Check out the relationship between the handlebar on my knee and the court, you know. Oh. Uh, 38 uh, end seam, and look at how close my knee is here. So we could go a little bit higher, and that's what we were doing for the customer. That's what he's saying. So it's like his, you know, his longer legs, knees getting close. So he's kind of customized these for some people. That's a really, it's neat to see that because these are things I don't always run into when I'm on my own. So we found a really nice, quiet, beautiful spot to take some photos. And I want to hit the rest of the specs here because Sam has so many cool stories to share. And I don't want that to be interrupted. I want you guys to get the full like picture on this thing. So there's only one frame size. It's like, uh, I think it's like 19.75 on the sort of estimated seat tube length there and i've measured reach and i've measured you know standover height and everything it is a bit bit of a bigger bike uh, but some of that's just because of that that longer fork and everything and then these tires they're 26 by 2.4 so you know effectively maybe they're, they're wider they give you stability there's a little bit of kind of buzzing because of these nubs but they do offer smooth fat tires now so there's a lot of options being able to customize this thing and you guys heard sam talking about the stem and different handlebar setup for their larger friend andre there are some rack bosses on the rear i really like that it looks like you could potentially even mount a fender on the rear i'm not really sure about up front here i did see these bosses but there aren't any bottle cage bosses you know you'll hear me call that out sometimes it'd be nice if they had an option because you don't have to use the bottle cage you can just leave that but some people might want to put a folding lock or have some beverages at hand so that's that's one area where i'm like okay you know aluminum alloy frame 
uh, steel chain ring here. This is 44 teeth, and you can see the piece of tape we were counting them just to be sure. Uh, steel chain cover, which is sturdy. It's not, it's not gonna get bent or rattle around quite as much as aluminum alloy. Um, however, it could rust over time, and you did hear that chain like bouncing up and down. Look at that, it's, it's a little bit looser. We are in a higher gear right now. This is a seven-speed Shimano Altus. That's one step up from base level in the Shimano lineup, 13 to 28 tooth. So it's kind of like, you know, gets the job done. But this is a speed pedelec. It can go up to 28 miles per hour. Uh, so, you know, having kind of a wider range, it'd be nice if instead of a 13 tooth that went all the way down to 11, um, that high gear, that's the one that, that you pedal fast with. So I haven't quite done 28 on this. Um, that would be a piece of like consideration. The motor here, 750 watts nominal, but I think it peaks out at like 1200. And it is powerful. And being able to just juice it is it, very satisfying. Twist throttles right up here on the right. Kind of like riding a motorcycle or something. It's nice to have that, and especially if you've got the seat in a lower position like this, or maybe your, your leg extension isn't perfect because you're kind of trying to be relaxed in this nice upright swept back handlebar situation. Um, that's when the throttle could come in handy. But if you do go with pedal assist, uh, we've got this nice sealed cadence sensor down here. So I'm estimating 12 magnets, and you can see the wire coming off of it. So a lot of the older cadence sensors I would see are over on that side, and they'd you could see the magnets and they weren't sealed and so they could get bumped out of position and it just wasn't as consistent or durable. So I like that. I also, I like where they've positioned this kickstand. It's not perfect. You can see that there's a little bit of, you know, kind of pedal lock potentially, but if you just keep going with it, it, it doesn't hit as long as you tip the pedal. So there, there was a little bit of damage on the other kickstand. But again, if you put it too far back here, you know, that, that front wheel could be flopping around. It's a heavier bike. Like I said, almost 76 pounds on this thing. Um, actually lighter than I expected though, considering just how big it looks. I've uh, got these nice big dropouts back here, 12 millimeter axle, got the power cable coming out the side. That's a point of vulnerability, but they've done a pretty good job. You know, it's, it's not coming way out. It looks like there, there is space for adding like a derailleur guard here maybe, or possibly supporting a rack. You've got two threaded eyelets there. And then on this side, two more. So not too bad. And then the the disc brake mount and Sam's going to talk a little bit about that here in a second because it sounds like they recommended like hey like let's let's upgrade from mechanical a lot of times these more affordable bikes they'll just do a mechanical disc brake and then those cables stretch and you just don't get that instant stopping power uh, because the rear brake you know the cable has to go a lot further all the way back there so you're, you're adding work to that that hand that that effort that you're doing there a lot of times they'll have larger levers so here you have medium size these are like you know three or four finger kind of depending on your hand size adjustable reach so you can bring them in if you're wearing gloves they do have motor inhibitors so you override the throttle the pedal assist whatever you're in control i really like that but they've kind of flipped them right so normally uh the right brake is rear uh, this time it's it's not it's the front the left brake is the rear. So I was I was asking Sam, I was like, did you guys install this wrong or what happened? And you said... No, that, that's like a motorcycle thing. Uh, all motorcycles, you have your brake on the um, right-hand side and your clutch is on the left-hand side. That's the way it came out of the box. That's the way it was assembled. But we do have customers that specifically ask us to switch to this style when we put the bikes together. And that's not a problem. You can, in most cases, just it's a matter of... Uh, routing and and switching whichever side you like it on so okay so that's great feedback and that's one of the benefits of working with a shop uh looks like civi bikes does sell through shops however they also sell direct i've seen like a buy now button on their website why did you how did how did this happen why did you start working with them and what were your recommendations i never saw the original model so yeah they had five prototypes that came into the shop and what we did was we were like we get people coming into our store all the time yeah and i mean at one point it was almost weekly we were having like a manufacturer show up or a distributor show up and we'd check out the bikes and nine times out of ten i'm like i already got something like that on my showroom floor good luck to you yeah and we send them packing but this was kind of unique and different looking and i checked it out and i said man that looks like an old bobber and i'm like <laughs> you should call it the bobber man don't call it the cheetah nobody wants to call that thing a cheetah it looks like an old bobber cheetah is my favorite animal sam so oh well hey okay hey. <laughs> so 
when they came in with it, I went and test rode it. It had really good power with that 750 watt motor. It, you know, pulled really good for a guy my size. Yeah. But I was like, guys, you know, you got five prototypes in here. Um, when are you gonna actually be bringing them in? They go, we got a shipment of 50 coming in. So this has a 750 watt motor on it. And when you're dealing with that much power, you know, it goes 28 miles an hour. Mechanical brakes just weren't happening. When I test rode it, I was like, I can't stop this thing fast enough. You need to upgrade uh, hydraulic brakes. Mm. Some of the other suggestions I made was, because it's 28 miles an hour, your cadence is too fast, so you're gonna be just riding this thing like a motorcycle and you won't actually be pedaling it. And a lot, a lot of people, that's fine for some people. They just wanna ride it like a motorcycle, but it's nice when you have pedal assist that your cadence matches your speed when you're up above 20, 25 miles an hour, right? So that bigger sprocket would help. That didn't make it onto the bike. So you recommended instead of 44 tooth, like 48 or 50. No, 52 would be 52. way better on this bike. However, yeah. I mean, again, 76 pound bike. So then you're compromising on the climbing and the starting because this is only 28 tooth sprocket. You'd need, you didn't need 32 or you'd, you'd bigger. That's right. So you, you've got a gearbox back there and with the torque of a 750 motor, you it, you're gonna be able to climb those hills as long as you downshift the thing and you put some effort into it. Most all electric bikes aren't gonna climb a steep hill on their own. Yeah. You have to like, map. and certain customers, you have to educate how to use a transmission. They've forgotten. I've had a customer come in once and he said, Sonny, the last time I was on a bike was like, you know, 25 years ago, and it was a single speed with a coaster brake. He didn't know how to shift the gears. And I had to literally take him up a hill and educate him on how to do that. And it takes about a month for people to ride a bike to get the feel for it and what gear to be in and some people just leave it in high gear all the time unless they're you know in a situation that they are climbing a hill okay so i want to break this down a little bit because i feel like i could that's a lot of terminology there and gearbox and everything this has a human powered drivetrain with seven speeds and then the electronic drivetrain or um, drive system as i call it the motor the battery and it's completely independent in this case because it's it's like a it's a hub motor so even if that chain broke or the derailleur wasn't working right or whatever, this, this motor is gonna give you a lot of power. That's the 750 to 1200 watts. Um, I think it's at least 80 Newton meters of torque. I, they didn't say, um, by the way, while we're on the subject, 330 pound recommended like weight capacity on this bike and you're 200 something. Yeah, I'm, I'm about 240 right now. So this is pretty great. A lot of electric bikes like 200 or 250 is the limit. So 330 is great. But coming back to the drive system here, you don't have to worry too much about shifting gears. As long as you've got some speed going into a hill, this thing's gonna do okay, depending on your weight and all that other stuff and how full the tires are, uh, five to 30 PSI. So more full is gonna be a little more efficient. But if you do start to help, if you do wanna pedal along, it's gonna help. It's gonna extend your range a little bit. It's gonna make it a little easier to climb. And that's where you gotta shift gears. So here's the shifter. Um, not my favorite shifter. You know, I gripe about this a lot of times when I'm doing reviews because you know, you got the little trigger shifters on f some of the mountain bikes and stuff. They're real easy for me to reach and they're kind of natural with my hand position. This one, I gotta reach way up like this. But they do that because we've got this twist throttle here and there's like a housing and a wire and stuff. And it, it's, it would kind of get crowded if you went with the traditional little triggers. And one of the other benefits is if you're wearing those gloves, it's cold out or something. Uh, these are bigger buttons or you've got a bigger hand like Sam, you know, it's, it's, it's bigger. It just works better. So we got a little flick bell and everything. But I, I just want to clarify that before we go through the drive systems and everything that, yeah, there's seven gears to shift figure that out. It's riding a bike. And then the flip side is you have a motor that in this case, it's not a mid drive. You don't have to worry about mashing gears. You don't have to worry too. It's like, it's going to do its thing. If you're going to go for a long ride on this bike, usually you're going to find a, a speed that you're comfortable with. And you're going to find that that cadence where you can match it while you're pedaling along. There we go. If you're on that throttle and you're up at like that higher rate of speed, you're going to be burning that battery up way quicker. You're oh, going to be yeah. draining it a lot faster. So we also recommended it to him. We were like, we, we were impressed with the performance of the bike. And then we were like, 13 amp hour battery. Come on guys, get a bigger <laughs> battery in there. So they actually followed through on that and they brought a 17 and a half amp hour battery. Wonderful. We only got two of them in on this last shipment though. And I said, I want them both. Get bring them over yeah. here for my customers. And I've already sold both of those. So yeah, it, it, that, that helps with range. If you're burning that battery and you're getting at a lot of throttle. If I'm going for a long ride though, I usually just find that cadence that I'm comfortable with. Yeah. You yeah, know. so this is great, man. This is, I feel like we've covered a lot of the drive system stuff and some of the options. It's neat they have options. Again, $300 more if you want to get that upgraded 17.5 amp hour battery pack, one extra pound. Um, sounds like a lot of them are sold. And it's neat that they're working with shops and stuff because otherwise you've got a year long comprehensive warranty, but 
these are heavy and it's a lot of work to ship and kind of assemble and stuff. I'm thankful to have this this relationship and be able to look at these things and look at the colors and test ride it and feel this thing out. I want to call out some other little minor things. You'll notice that pin right there in the middle. They put that on there so that um, the frame doesn't get damaged if the handlebar tips all the way to the side like that. You don't want to hit this like tank and mar that up. So that that was a nice little extra they did. They kind of going, going out of their way. These nice padded faux leather grips. The handlebar being swept back like this is really nice. 30.4 millimeter seat post, so it's a little bit thicker. You know, they didn't just go with 27.2. You can get a seat post suspension, like Sam was talking about, the Thud Buster for that gentleman who, who wanted a higher seat. And then that gives you even more cushion in addition to those tires. So you can run them at higher PSI for efficiency, but still get some comfort. And then back to the bars, just having a longer bar, like that takes vibration and stuff and it kind of softens it towards the end. Um, yeah, and a sprung saddle that it comes with by default. So there's always a lot that you can say about an electric bike and many different angles. Um, do you feel like we've missed anything before I jump into the display? Oh, uh, not really. We'll, we'll go ahead and get that done and then I'll make some other points later. Okay, sweet, sweet. So uh, let's go over to this one back here. It's maybe a little bit darker and I want you to be able to see this. This display is pretty awesome, guys. So there's like an on-off switch down here on the side of the tank kind of click that that's also where the charging port is and I should probably show you see down there got that little charging port so it's pretty well protected it's got that little rubber cover and there's the on off switch and then we come up here hold that power button for a second Look at that civvy bikes color beautiful in some ways I mean this this is a fancy display it doesn't swivel super easily. It's not removable, but if you didn't over tighten it, you could probably adjust it. The thing is the stem, the way it's built, cause it's kind of this like direct mount and then a really short stem on top. There's, there's, it's just kind of the, that's how it, it kind of is um, from my experience. Uh, and it's, it's not bad. If you're someone like me that's nearsighted, it's nice to have a bigger display that you can see from far back. And these handlebars and the light, they kind of protect it. It's recessed pretty nicely here. So we got speed in the middle. We've got odometer, trip meter, five bar battery infographic so 20 percent increments which you know it's it could be a little bit more precise i don't think this has range estimate or anything so you just want to keep a good eye on that so you don't get stranded out there with a bigger kind of heavy bike with the big tires and stuff and then we got pedal assist level here so we have level one by default but i can take it down to zero and then it's just like a bicycle but you can run the headlight or you can go all the way up to five and i think you can even adjust and have finer increments in the settings to get to the settings, you hold that set button for a couple seconds. And here we go. We got trip clear, brightness, speed limit, 99 right now. I really think it's closer to 28, but I think you can actually take it down if you want to. Um, and that's nice too for people who are just like, I, I don't wanna go super fast. I wanna extend my range. I don't wanna accidentally, you know, get crazy with this thing. Uh, and then wheel size, it's 28. This should actually be 26. So I'm gonna take it down, perfect. Uh, units miles per hour could be kilometers per hour battery voltage 48 that's great advanced settings so this is kind of cool current limit so you could take the current down maybe and and it's not going to be quite as zippy it's going to be a little bit more efficient uh, poles in the motor i wouldn't mess with that um, start after poles. so this is like how quickly uh, it responds to pedal assist throttle throttle level so you can maybe adjust that to assist levels this is what i was talking about it's default five and then a password so you could set that up if you want to maybe lock your bike information save and exit so that's it and the button pad's pretty easy to reach you know there's a little bit of reaching because there's this extra funky button right here before i tell you about that there are some sort of overloaded features here if i hold the minus key this this bike does have walk mode and if i hold the plus key you actually change the background color so it goes from like a daytime to a nighttime mode and that's cool so it's black right now it's, it's not going to be as bright and, and distracting maybe if you're riding at night i like that so i'm going to take it back to daytime mode there we go. And if I tap the power button over here, then you get a little light icon up here, but you'll notice that the light didn't actually turn on. So that's because there's this extra, especially built like, you know, bright and low beam light selector that they've added. And, and you'll notice like in the low beam, there's this cool blue ring around the headlight. It looks really cool. We were in the shop earlier and you could really see it. Just, I don't know, styling comes to mind and then just kind of bright mode at the bottom. So very, very cool steel housing on that. Uh, that's, that's it, man. That's my, my overview on it. And I'm ready to go for a ride unless you have more insights or. Well, I just want to talk about patterns we're starting to see on powerful motors like this. Yeah. You got to look for uh, loose spokes. 
Oh. So anybody that's going to be purchasing a bike that has, a, especially if it's a heavier rider, uh, be proactive and maybe tighten the spokes when it's brand new, out of the box. How would be tight? A good idea. I mean, people are, I'm afraid to recommend this because people can be like, okay, tighten them, and then you could untrue your wheel. This is true. So maybe you need to take it into a shop. If you bought it online, you could go to a local bike shop. If you bought it from a store, ask them like, hey, you know, I'm a big guy. And I'm, it's, I'm saying this because we've seen patterns of these on a lot of bikes lately, not, not, not just this brand, but I could, I could name off six other brands, which I won't do, but we've seen a lot of broken spokes lately. And when you start seeing those patterns, you have to start being proactive and starting to do things that'll keep people from having problems. You know? What I've heard people talk about, so by the way, he's talking about tightening your spokes. That's the little nipple right here, the silver piece. So you kind of turn it and it, it tightens the spoke. Um, so they don't get loose over time. This side's just permanently fixed, and then this one's, that's where it kind of goes in and out. But if you over-tighten one side, then it sort of pulls the wheel, and that's what I'm talking about, going out of true. So a lot of these shops will have like a wheel stand, and they'll be able to spin it and tighten the spokes and spin it, and they can keep it really close. They have like a caliper thing that measures it. That's something a lot of people don't have. You gotta take the motor off and stuff. This doesn't have quick release, it's a heavy bike. So basic wheel spoke tightening you could just kind of go in there and if you you know i've seen people at shops just kind of wiggle them and see if there are any any yep. loose ones and then they'll tighten just not over tighten but they'll tighten it yep. that way do you ever put loctite on these to keep them from no don't do that okay yeah once you do that you won't your spoke wrench will just strip out the nipple on it so oh. I, rec I don't recommend that i also want to address the manufacturer is actually open to suggestions which is very rare um maybe not on my level it's rare uh, but it's kind of cool that we made these suggestions and they did those improvements to them right away. Yeah. Um, I'm sure other manufacturers get feedback from uh, not only the dealer network, but from the individuals that buy the bikes. You know, they, that all trickles back to them. And some manufacturers take that information and Im implement it, and other manufacturers, it just falls on deaf ears. Well, you know, that's nice. And I agree with Sam. I have never bought a bike from these guys, but I did see them at Interbike, and they were really polite, and they had a nice little booth, and that's expensive. They were really clearly putting in the effort um, so I appreciate that. Even having Brent do these other reviews and stuff, he got paid for that, right? So they're making an effort to reach you, and I think they're doing a pretty good job. So right on, Civi Bikes. I think maybe we should hop on these things again, do, do some more riding. Let's do it. And I want to put the camera on, too, so you guys can see exactly what's going on here, that motor up close. Found this nice, quiet section of the neighborhood and thought it'd be fun to show you guys. Can you do the light again, Sam? There we go. Yeah, really love that. It's a great safety feature. Go ahead and mount up here and we'll just do it oops maybe after this car goes there you go so it did take a minute for that pedal assist to kick in because i'm in a higher gear just have to wait for that crank arm to pass by the magnets Oh, look at this roundabout. It's fun. Nice. You definitely hear a little bit of that like zipping sound from the motor, but that's not unlike most fat tire e-bikes. So I think a lot of what you get here is just that really cool aesthetic and some good brakes, nice relaxed body position. It's pretty cool. Okay guys, from here you can see that fat bike specific hub motor in the rear buffang, internally geared, planetary geared. Um, we got the cassette, we got the 44 tooth chain ring, this nice paint match chain cover, love that. It's gonna keep you clean and it just makes the bike look beautiful. And then it looks like Civi Bikes has chosen like a, a bigger quick release lever here so it doesn't hurt your hand as much and you can really crank it down and if you're a big guy or girl you want that thing to be tight right so i feel like that's great we're gonna just take a little ride here i'm gonna go off the curb listen because you know before we were getting some slap there the chain was kind of bumping into that chain cover
This thing is fun to ride. It's so just flies, guys. I'm, and we're going a little bit over uh, 20, or at least I am, with the throttle. So that's something, it technically is this kind of a class three, and depending on how you use the throttle or the settings, it could maybe go faster. But Sam has also said that for him, as a bigger guy, you, you don't necessarily go quite the top 28 mile per hour speed so there's there's some there's a variety here of performance and it comes back to to who you are and everything but i didn't notice it nearly any sounds after going off that curb like yeah there was a little bit of bounce for a second but otherwise it's been really uh really quiet pedal assist does sort of start and stop there's there's definitely some delay even with the 12 magnet sensor it's just different than um, a torque sensor or a multi-sensor. There's a little bit of delay, so I love that they've got those motor inhibitors built in onto those brake levers. It was a great choice. So, another thing, you know, you might hear that squeaking up there. Sam has this uh, stuff in his pocket. You can just show it here on the... Yeah, this stuff. It's like a disc brake silencer. Original Swiss formula, so... That's neat, 10 bucks. You say you just put this on the, the pads? Yeah, you're supposed to put it on the pads, but we're out here in the field, so I'm just gonna spray it right on through the caliper. Oh, okay, see if that works. Just trying to flush it in there. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna take it forward. Oh man. Almost instantly quiet, you guys. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, we've, we've recommended that to a few of the customers and it, it works well. Okay, thank you. Yep. Good job, man. This is a bumpier section of street and it's really handling the bumps well. Whoa, nice stop, man. Thanks. Those brakes are really working great. Yeah, they're, they stop on a dime, no doubt. That's awesome. That's good, man. Thank you so much for taking me around, doing yep. this little ride, Sam. Let's see a little bit of downtown Fullerton. Well, yeah, and I love that you have both of these. You've got like, you know, some different colors. We could do this together and trade off a little bit, even though it's the same bike. Uh, We've had... got all three colors in stock at the shop, actually. That's all... Oh, that's yep. right. You guys, we were going to show you the last one with the red accent, but he's still building that one. Seems like they've been pretty popular, yeah? Yeah, a lot of the big guys are coming in. This is one that if you want a powerful big bike, check it out. One of our customers also has been riding this exclusively off-road. Oh. He's an old timer with a big white beard and he comes <laughs> in. He's come in with two for two tune-ups. We've done a couple tune-ups for him and yeah, he's he's has having fun on it. And while we're at it, this is not a sponsored mention or anything, but Burn, you have this cool looking helmet. It kind of reminds me of a chopper helmet, sort of. It's like, I think it's more like a baseball helmet, actually. The bill on it, it reminds me of baseball. Okay, yeah. well, cool. Play ball, baby. Yep. <laughs> we're, that's it, you guys, for the full written review. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com with all the details, specs, and stuff. I welcome your feedback, corrections, and I don't know, experiences and stuff in the comments below or back at the site. Uh, we want to do a great job with this. We appreciate that feedback. So. Have fun out there and ride safe. Absolutely.